start to record. All right. Okay, well, we've got 13 people on. Um, this is always a good session. I just wanted to announce that I'm going to do a different series in March. I've done this a couple of times and some people have also been to um, my live session. And so the other thing I'm going to do is going to have a Q&A. So we're going to do some masterminds in uh, March. And uh, one week I'm going to have a home stagers in the area. And they are going to be, um, they're going to be talking and answering questions on home staging and introduce you a little bit to what that's about. I'm going to have a lawyer on one week. And you can uh, ask questions about real estate transactions from a legal perspective. I'm going to have a home inspector on one week to take you through what a home inspection is when you go to sell your home and uh, have him answer any questions. And that's and then I'm going to have um, the financial person on to talk about financial pre-planning. She wasn't able to join us last time, but she's going to take us through a, a short presentation and answer any questions you might have related to finances uh, with regard to buying and selling properties and anything else. Re reverse mortgages too. She, answer, she can, is quite well informed on that subject. So that's going to be on Tuesdays in March and I will send out an invite when I have that all set up. So hopefully some of you can join us and it'll be a little different. Okay, today we're going to do the last session in um, on month. Now there's some, can you see some scratching on the screen there? Yeah, yeah. I don't know what that's from. <laughs> Looks like some kid got a crayon. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know where that, what that's from. So anyway, it's not me on my side doing it. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not sure. We'll have to. We'll have to uh, bear with that. Uh, I am screen sharing. Okay. Um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about um, preparing your home for sale. So I'm going to go through a bunch of different items, whether you're thinking of doing some renovations, whether you're not sure whether to do renovations, and how we as realtors look at preparing homes for sale in this market. And uh, of course, I always like to start off with a little quiz because we are going to have some interactivity in here. And uh, with all the snow outside on the ground, it got me thinking to spring and hopefully, hopefully we'll have warm weather in the next little while. And uh, thinking of my garden and which uh, flowers come up first. So I am going to start a poll and see what your favorite spring flower is. So you should be able to <laughs> vote on that. It's a multiple choice question. You can pick all the flowers you want and then I'll share the results. Tulips, I like daffodils. I may have missed some. That was the most, the thing <laughs> I think of coming up first. Hyacinth, well, that's good enough. Yeah. All right. Oops. I always love to see beautiful magnolia trees in bloom. I like snowdrop too. More people can vote. Okay. All right, I'm gonna turn off the voting and now I'm going to share the results. So can everybody see that? Yep. Yep. All right, so tulips for the win and then daffodils. So Ooh. hopefully we will get some beautiful gardens in the spring. I'm starting to hear the birds. Yeah, we have a lot of birds in our backyard because my husband puts a feeder up. So the wow. birds are beautiful in our neighborhood. Lots of variety. Yeah. Okay. So um, as we've gone through before, this series of seminars takes you through the whole process start to finish from the understanding of why a move might be right for you, working through the financial part of it and developing a plan and a budget, and then going through the preparation um, in which we already took a look at some properties and what those cost. And now we're going to take a look at if you were going to sell your house, how to prepare that for sale to get the most money for it. So that when you go to act, then you've thought through all these things and you're able to make uh, the decisions as stress-free as possible. 
So what I wanted to do is start out a little bit about what is happening in the real estate market right now, because you may see some new news articles from time to time, and I thought I would just uh, tell you what's happening now. And I'll put this in context of when you get your home ready to sell, some of what's happening in the real estate market will affect the decisions you make on preparing your home, depending on how strong a, a market it is. So right now we are at, in what we call a strong seller market. And that means that there is a, a great deal of buyers out there for every home that goes on the market. You know, it depends on the price point. Yeah, so anything in that $2 million and above, there's few people that have that kind of money in their bank accounts to be able to afford that. So we're kind of talking in and around the million range and prices have gone up uh, double digits in the last year. And it's really driven by supply and demand. Right now, there's very few properties on the market and there's lots of buyers uh, causing this um, houses to sell over the asking price. And you can see here the kind of dynamic of how that happens. We've got the average price going up because the listings have plummeted. So very strong supply and demand. And a lot of that's fueled because even in the pandemic, the people that have uh, jobs enough to support a home purchase are still working and they have been working through and they're not spending money on vacations and things like that now. So they're looking to buy homes and invest in real estate. And, the, and it's very cheap to uh, borrow money for them if they need a mortgage. And in Toronto this year, uh, the average price for the first time ever is expected to exceed a million dollars for the home. So who would have thought that when you bought your house that the average home price would be a million dollars? Projected, uh, projected 10% price increase over the year. So that double digits continuing to go and that's total GTA. Yeah. And then um, the, the, we need about 110,000 transactions to meet the buyer demand. And they're predicting about 105,000. So there's not enough homes coming on the market and that's still going to make that those prices jump. And it's, it's uh, quite aggressive right now. If you are a home buyer, it's tough. So with that in context, I always like to um, go through what's the best way to get your house ready to sell. And when you bought a home last, if your clothes looked like this, oops, sorry. And your phone looked like this, things may have changed since you did a real estate <laughs> transaction. And even when I bought my house 15 years ago, I expected to buy a house that I would have to do my own renovations and put my own stamp on the house. We were buying somebody else's house and we were making it ours. And we didn't have any expectation of having it renovated and move in ready. The things have changed in the last 15 years and buyers have very high expectations right now. And presentation is, top, is key to getting top price. But that's really up to you, how much you want to spend. And you can do nothing or you can do everything and maybe have a different price outcome. But the preparation and the, you know, the work at getting it ready and the money that you may have to get it ready is going to be different for everybody. So I'm going to kind of take you through from the do little to do everything to kind of walk you through what I see that being in this market. Can I ask whether I could record this? I'm recording it. You can, well, I don't know if you can, but I'm recording it. Okay. It, so it, I can send you. But I have to have permission. Oh, you can record it if you like. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I just don't know how you do it on your computer. I don't know. It's not maybe. I'm. I was trying, but. I'll. Uh, okay. Yeah. If you can't, I have it recorded, and I will put it up. Okay. In the. Um, I'll put I'll put the YouTube channel up and you can see oh. it. I've seen some people have, have done some of the other ones. So okay. Um, so presentation usually is key to getting top price. When your house is on the market, you want it to sell quickly for as much most money as possible. And what you can't control is what other homes are on the market that buyers have to choose from. So getting your house looking beautiful is a big part of getting your house sold for the top dollar right now. And that includes decluttering. It could include doing a home inspection for buyers to look at, doing 
the little repairs that you need to do, uh, doing some decor refreshing, getting a deep cleaning done. Even if you keep your house great, it's always good to get cleaners in and do kind of a top to bottom show ready cleaning and then consider doing renovations. And quite often we bring in home stagers to kind of um, you know, fill in all those little gaps to make your house really appealing to buyers. So I'm gonna do a quiz right now. Before we go through the presentation, I just mm -hmm. would like to get a feel for, if you had some money in your pocket to do an update on your home, do you have any ideas right now where you would spend the money? just to get a feel for what you guys are thinking. So I'm gonna to do a new poll here. Right. This is a not multiple choice. So you have to make a decision here. You have to pay, pick 21? Pick one, you have to pick one. Only just one, eh? Only one, yeah, I haven't not, I don't have that yeah. set up as multiple choice. <clears throat> I'm going to end that and I'm going to share the results. Okay, can everybody see that? Yeah. So I think most people would spread the money around where it's needed. So this is going to be a good presentation for people that are thinking um, with that in mind, because we're going to talk about where to spend the money and where it's going to get you the best return on investment. Is that okay? Came back to the slide now. Okay, so I'm going to start by talking about today's home buyers. As I said, I expected to buy a house that I would have to renovate on my own, and today's home buyers are what I call the HGTV generation. Mm -hmm. So they spend a lot of time online watching all these shows. I have to say, I watch all these shows too, um, and you may have watched them too, but they are very influential on how a buyers in our today's market purchase a home. Okay, so there's very high expectations when they go in and, and mm -hmm. part of me says, I understand that if you are spending half a million dollars or more on a home, you have some expectations because that is a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of these houses are in the States that they show and the costs there are ridiculously low compared to Toronto, but that uh, attitude of wanting things to look like this TV show houses is very predominant in today's buyers. So here is the kind of top list of buyer expectations. And I do a lot of work with buyers, so I'm working with these people all the time. They like things move in ready, especially if it's a busy family because they have kids that they're juggling, they have jobs that they're juggling and they don't feel that they have the time or energy to fix things on their own. They like lots of storage. They tend to have lots of stuff. Um, they like cleanliness because to them, the cleanliness of a property is equal to the uh, maintenance of the property. So they see that as the same thing. If it's not clean, then it hasn't been well-maintained. If it's clean, it's been well-maintained. Uh, they like to see professional finishes, so they can recognize when something looks like it's been done by a contractor versus something that's done by a do-it-yourselfer. They like it to look like the TV shows, so they're very highly influenced by the decor, and this is the cosmetics that are on TV, and sometimes that's not expensive to make your house look like that. They like light and bright. So lots of natural light, uh, big windows, very light open window coverings, no heavy draperies, nothing formal, um, and light paint colors, light cabinet colors in the kitchen, very trendy. And in a lot of cases, they're not terribly handy. 
And uh, when I'm walking through with buyers, I quite often will hear this. Oh, well, you know, I'm okay to do some renovations. And then when we walk into the room, they go, well, this room needs to be painted. I don't want to do that kind of work. So they often think of painting as fixing up. So, you know, today's home buyers, they'll walk into a room and say, I don't like this wall color. They're very literal and want things their way to be presented to them in their way too. So when you're going to sell a home, you have to kind of think through how to make it appeal to as many buyers as possible, because that will get you top dollar. And you can renovate, you can refresh, or you can do home staging. All of those three are great ways to look at it. And each one has a different price tag to it. So um, what I'm going to do is kind of take you through the steps to each of them. So. If you're thinking of doing some renovations, there's two ways that you can look at the renovation. One is to renovate to maintain the worth of the home over time. And then one of them is to renovate to increase value in order to sell. And both of them are great ways to start. And there's some priorities you can put to um, each of these items and a price tag to them and kind of figure out where it makes sense for you. So how do you choose what to do? So normally what I do as a real estate agent is help people through the research side of things. So take a look at homes and pictures of homes with and without the renovations to see what the difference in price is because you don't wanna spend $10,000 renovating a bathroom if it's not going to get you some return on your investment. In some cases, it's good to take a look at these properties in person just to see if the pictures match your experience in the home and understand what's going on. And the other one, the last thing to do is have a professional home inspection done to see what a home inspector would look at before you choose to sell. And sometimes this happens a year before, so you can kind of make these decisions ahead of time. So... How do you choose which way to go? Well, if you are renovating to maintain worth, usually it's because you may have deferred some mechanical updates. So you're okay with the furnace being 20 years old or the roof being okay and patched up, but it's time now maybe to put that money back into the house so that you can um, get the top dollar and you're not negotiating with a buyer over an old furnace. Uh, I can't talk now because I'm watching this um webinar on um, home selling. So this is on until two o'clock. I'm just gonna mute, there we go. Um, or if things are worn or broken. So, you know, if you have that kind of uh, loose um, tap or chipped um, sink and it shows, it just shows that it, the house may not have been maintained well and a buyer sees that even if it's a very visual thing though it's the time to renovate now, even if you're not putting expensive stuff in to get the house looking all consistent. And there's a funny thing with renovations. If you start to do one room and you do one room, great, but the rest of the house, that's where you've put all your money. Sometimes it makes the rest of the property look worse in comparison. So you have to take the whole context of the house into consideration when you're going through these decisions. So the top five renovations to maintain the worth of your home are the roof, the HVAC system, so the heating and your air conditioning, uh, replacing windows or doors that may be original. Uh, my house came with most of the windows replaced, but we still have a couple of original ones. And if I was ever to sell, that's probably the first thing I would do is just upgrade those original windows. They're fine now, but you know, a, a new buyer is not going to want to inherit them. Uh, taking a look at updating the electrical. I live in the West Rouge and my house was built in the 1970s. And quite often these houses were built with aluminum wiring, which has caused issues over the time. And sometimes some of that needs to be fixed in order to sell. And then any structural issues that you may have, if you've got some dampness maybe in a basement. Uh, so those sort of things those are the things that you would do to maintain the worth of your home. So if you've been deferring those, that might be a good place to start. Now, 
I did meet some people yesterday. We had a chat about their house. I just wanted to bring up something that I haven't talked about before. And they have a rental furnace and air conditioner. Mm -hmm. And that's quite appealing to people because it's a low cost of entry if you need to replace it. But I will tell you that the contracts that these service providers put you on are onerous and can quite often put a lien on your house. So be very careful when you are looking at replacing a furnace. If you're considering a rental or you have a rental, that's something that you need to pull out the contract and read that through carefully. You're probably better to get a loan and to pay it off than to get into one of those contracts. Okay, so when would you consider doing this type of renovation to increase value? Because they can be expensive, especially if you're looking at replacing a roof. If it is a buyer's market, so we're in a seller's market right now, if the market changed and there were lots of properties and buyers had lots of choice, these type of upgrades help your house stand out and provide value to a buyer because they're expensive for a buyer to do. And quite frequently, the buyer's spending all of their money to buy the house and they're projecting repairs five years out and seeing whether they need to replace the roof. If you have six months or a year lead time to get some of these things done, uh, COVID has affected the ability to turn around renovations quickly. So sometimes you need to be able to plan with a little more time. And if there's a large gap in the sale price that you're seeing between an updated house and a non-updated house, and that gap is uh, higher than the cost of your renovation, then that's a good idea to renovate to increase value. Again, and a real estate agent can help, you know, figure that out for you. So if we were looking at now renovating, this would be to renovate to bring your house up to the decor, modern decor, modern finishes inside. The top five renovations with the highest return on investment are the kitchen, the bathroom, repainting, updating small decor items, and decluttering. Okay, and they will get you the highest return on investment. I'm going to have a caveat in there that updating a kitchen and a bathroom, you can spend zero to you know, $100,000 on these things, you need to choose where you spend your money wisely. And you have to decide whether you're going to be able to enjoy those renovations. So if you would like a kitchen update, but you're planning on selling your house in five years, do it now while you can enjoy it. But renovate with the materials and workmanship that's consistent with the area. So if you are in an area where luxury kitchens are a thing, then that's what you would need to do to get top dollar. If you're thinking of putting this in to sell your house, same as the bathroom. So if you're in, so for example, if I'm selling a condo townhouse in an area that's not that great, say it's in Oshawa, maybe they don't need to put granite counters in to get the best price. Maybe just uh, replacing the appliances is a good idea because that keeps it consistent with the area and then people don't overspend. Now, a lot of people will say to me, well, I'm, I'm just going to update and renovate to sell. Uh, they're going to tear it out. Why should I spend the money? It's generally because if you spend the money wiser, you will get uh, a return on your investment, especially if you're doing it with the kitchen and bathroom in mind. If you don't want to spend money in the kitchen and bathroom, repainting your house in very specific tones, very specific paint colors um, is will get you you maybe spend $5,000, you'll probably get an extra $20,000 from a buyer with a freshly painted house. Okay. Updating decor, um, taking out some maybe older light fixtures and replacing them with inexpensive uh, Home Depot light fixtures that are quite contemporary, quite often refreshes a room very easily, as well as refinishing uh, floors changing out plumbing fixtures, replacing worn flooring or making flooring match. Sometimes the floors in different rooms aren't matching. And if you can redo that matching, that's a very uh, positive thing that uh, buyers like 
And then of course decluttering. That would be the probably the cheapest and most effective thing to do. Okay. Um, COVID has also changed a little bit about what buyers are looking for in a home because they're not spending money on vacations and buying cottages is crazy expensive right now. Uh, they're really looking to buy homes that have nice outdoor living spaces. So what does that mean? Well, generally these are families with kids and they're looking for a nice outdoor space that has some yard that's kid friendly. So space for a trampoline, space for a jungle gym set. Um, you don't have to put these in, but just they're, this is what they're looking for. Homes with pools went crazy this year. Um, two years ago, people either liked a pool or didn't like a pool. Now everybody's looking for a pool and to get a contractor to put one in is like a six to eight month wait time. Fire pits again. Uh, and then landscaping out updates. So they have a, a, you know, a defined area that's a deck, a barbecue area, low maintenance for young families. Vegetable gardens became more of a thing this year as well as people started to take up different hobbies. So if you've got a nice backyard, that's certainly going to add to your value of your home. Any questions so far? You guys are very quiet. So how do you set a realistic and restrained budget to manage the costs? So I'm going to give you a guideline. So if this is this kind of chart we have here, if you have not done any of these things for the last 10 years, here is your priority list. So you've done your kitchen within the last 10 years, you've done a bathroom within the last 10 years, then focus on decluttering, painting and cleaning. If in the last 15 years, you haven't done anything, then you look at these things and then you add in some costs for upgrading some of your mechanicals that might be getting to the end of its life like the roof your furnace your air conditioner and maybe take a look at removing carpet or replacing carpet if you haven't done any of this for the past 25 years joan we were talking about this driveway maybe the inside of your garage replacing your front door or even painting your front door and maybe updating some of the cabinetry in your kitchen. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't have to be expensive, but if you can just do a, um, a refresh and uh, without having to tear out your whole kitchen, though that's money well spent. So these are a building list. So you start with this, you add on this, and you add on that. Kitchens and bathrooms sell a house. I'm going to show you some pictures in a minute of uh, styles that are popular. But try and use a professional where you can. And uh, make sure that everything is done to code. Stick with classic and neutral finishes for countertops, flooring, and paint choices. And classic and neutral right now means light gray, uh, marble, white surfaces, uh, bright and light is what is in now, and that is classic and neutral. It doesn't have to be custom. You can get fantastic IKEA kitchens. You can get fantastic IKEA bathrooms that are not terribly expensive, that look great, and buyers love them. And Home Depot, they sell out of the box cabinets and everything, and it, and Lowe's, they're inexpensive and they look beautiful. Here's an idea of what we're talking about in terms of style. So if you're thinking of redoing a kitchen, these pictures are obviously kitchens. These are the colors and the styles that right now are featured on all the home shows and updated uh, and what buyers are looking for. So you can see here the trendy side, we have some colored cabinets. We have the cabinets not matching. So you've got white cabinets on this side, you've got blue cabinets on this side, farmhouse sink. You can see in here that the kitchens are open plan with um, a um, granite countertops and a center island. You don't have to have a sink in the island. These are just the pictures that I had. Stainless steel appliances that match. So that is an, another upgrade that I would recommend if you have replaced 
some of your appliances over time, but they're not matching because the stove worked and you had to do the fridge and the fridge is stainless steel. It's worth spending a few hundred dollars to get a new stove to match so that your appliances are all the same color. Uh, nice inexpensive light fixtures that have that kind of farmhouse modern look, pot lights. These are all uh, things that are things that buyers like if you're doing a renovation. And these can all be stock cabinets. If you're taking a look at something more traditional, um, this would be something that on the left, so you can see that there's still the older appliances with the black finishes, not stainless steel, but uh, cupboards can be painted out. So you can bring cabinet painters in, they'll take the doors off, they'll do a sanding. And for selling it, you can have the wooden cupboards painted white, make everything light and bright, even with dark appliances and dark countertops, it refreshes the home and gives it uh, brightness and opens it up. Again, here, I brought this picture in because it's got some painted cabinetry. And regular painters can do that. There are specialty painters that if you want it to last for 15, 20 years and you're doing it for yourself, they'll come in with uh, special paint supplies to do it. But a regular painter can also paint the cabinets. And that's a really inexpensive fix. Okay. Um, home refreshing and lower cost updates. So we're going to kind of move in out of the renovation and back into kind of more of just refreshing things. Did anybody have any questions about renovations? You know, get a couple of quotes, um, get referrals from people that have used um, renovators that you know that have done a nice job. Um, ask them if they have seniors discounts if you're in that age category. All those things will save you some money. No questions? Oh, you guys are quiet. Okay, so, so home refreshing. So we are talking now about some cosmetic things. And this is to update your home on a lower budget without doing full renovations um, to make sure it appeals to buyers, the most buyers out there. So what buyers don't like is they don't particularly like carpet. They don't like dated wallpaper. Um, we were just having this conversation before this started. Wallpapers back in but it's a very specific type of wallpaper, just a large scale kind of contemporary print that's on one feature wall or in a powder room. But dated wallpaper is something that they don't like. Heavy customization. So if you've done some really specific renovations to suit your family, you may want to tone that back a bit before you go to sell. Um, Buyers don't like heavy formal draperies and valances. When I sold my mom's house, she had a lot of very beautiful drapes, but to get it ready to sell, we took all the heavy drapes down and just left the nice shears up. So a nice rod with shears um, is great to open up the space and make it bright. Buyers don't particularly like dark colors. So if you have any bedrooms painted in some really nice colors that you've enjoyed over the years, I would recommend painting those out, uh, like a nice pale gray, just to make the rooms brighter and opened up. And uh, I know some people are going to want to put your hands over your ears here, but buyers really don't like natural wood trim or wood paneling. And this is a fight I have with my husband all the time. Let's paint it out. No, I like it wood. How can somebody paint over wood? Well, buyers really like it kind of painted white they enjoy that color. So I'm gonna show you some before and afters with some trim work painted out and wood painted out just to show you the difference it can make in a house. So here we go, some pictures. So um, this is a house that I sold a couple of years ago. This is the basement room and the homeowners hadn't used it uh, for a while. They were using it to store things. So obviously we had some decluttering to do that they did. Uh, but the big transformation we did here on a bit of a shoestring is 
we put in Roland carpet. So under here, this is an area rug, the green rug, under it was linoleum tile. So we got uh, one of the local carpet shops to bring some Roland Berber in, uh, nice light gray. And then we painted out all of the, um, just a couple of coats of gray paint on all of these walls because the paneling was in really good shape. And then painted the trim around the window white. It's, I know it's hard to see the difference here. And, um, but the trim work was white and the walls were gray and the door here was all painted white. And then we took out the kind of workshop looking light fluorescent lights here because they were working, but we couldn't buy, the covers were broken and we couldn't find ones that fit. So we took those out and put in some inexpensive light fixtures from Home Depot. So all in all, it took maybe a week to do this. Hopefully you can see the big transformation from kind of a dark space that's cluttered to a very bright space that was very appealing to buyers. And uh, especially if you have young families, having your kids in a playroom out of sight from your, um, the rest of the family, you wanna make it as inviting as possible. And I think I've sold, I don't know, four or five houses where all we've done is paint the replace the flooring and paint the walls in a basement with kind of <clears throat> paneling and it makes a huge difference. So here's another example of a before and after. You can see this house on the left had paneling on part of the walls and this was drywalled, but we painted it all the same color to look like continuous. And this, I will tell you that this flooring was in impeccable condition and it was, beautiful, just like the day that the house had been built. But because it was quite overwhelming and dated, we did put some Berber carpet down over it. And um, sometimes you end up having to replace the baseboards because these old baseboards sometimes are brittle and you can't find this matching ones now. They don't make this size and style anymore. So we replaced the baseboards and painted it all. And then this cabinet in the corner, which was a built-in was painted white to match. So you, you can see how nice and bright it looks after. Mm -hmm. um, so what paint colors do you use? So here's some idea of what you use now, depending on the room. And I will tell you that while it all looks gray to you, it can make a difference depending on <clears throat> where the room is. So white, light gray that's very neutral, because grays can look blue and grays can look green, depending on the light. But if you get a very neutral gray, and you're using furniture that's either brown or gray, it works great with these specific colors. Because if you can get, if you get a gray with a bit of blue in it and you put brown furniture in it, it looks not as nice, not as matched. So these are the colors that I would recommend right now. And I would do the walls um, an eggshell finish so that it's washable. And then I would do a semi-gloss, pure white on the trim. Okay. Any questions on that? Hopefully the before and afters kind of showed you the value that it brings to the house in terms of um, the cost. And I would say both of those rooms that we updated were done for less than $2,000, including the paint and the carpet and everything. Sue, I've got a question. Yeah, I've got a nightmare basement, which is full of my husband's uh, junk at the moment. But mm -hmm. talking about the walls, you were talking about all those wooden walls. Ours was originally made to look like an English pub. And it's, okay. got, it's got strips of brown wood on, but the, the basic wall is that kind of scratchy, uh, I don't know what you call it, but the, oh. the yeah, rough... You know, so do you have um, paneling on the bottom half and then stucco with... Um, uh, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. I, I have seen one friend who actually, um, her husband actually sanded it all down and it, it actually looks very nice. It's now smooth, but it's got a pattern where, where it was raised before. Yeah. So it, you can just paint it one color and it looks okay. But yeah. it, th this is, this has never been touched in, you know, yeah. since 1977. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of homes in my neighborhood have that kind of pub looking basement. Mm. Um, so you could, the easiest thing to do would be to paint it so there's less contrast between the dark and the stucco. Yeah. 
and do that kind of the do the the woodwork pale gray and still have it stand out from the stucco and okay the yeah scraping down stucco is a huge job depending oh, on yeah. how textured it is and in some cases it's easier just to go over it you can get drywall in different thicknesses and having somebody redo it with drywall over it is okay cheaper if you wanted to go that route yes but that's a bigger job yeah yeah but just painting the wood trim pale gray and the stucco probably giving it a coat of white paint would probably okay. make everything bright and um inviting okay no that sounds good yeah because yeah, it's just i don't know what we'd ever do with it you know yeah <laughs> i've seen that in a lot of houses in uh, in my oh, it's got a red shag carpet as well <laughs> pardon me there's a red shag carpet there as oh, well oh <laughs> very nice my husband took over the basement regardless of whether it was finished or not yeah and uh, yeah. it's still the same so. yeah yeah <laughs> okay in that case if there's carpet down there i mean i would take the red shag out and just do berber or yeah. you could do instead of you can you can always do a um a laminate flooring but in a basement i wouldn't do laminate i would do a vinyl laminate look because uh, laminate does not stand up to any sort of water oh, okay but there's lots of vinyl products now that are really water resistant and then if anything happens you don't have to replace your whole floor okay and it, looks, it looks like laminate or it can even look like hardwood but it's actually a vinyl product okay yeah thank so, you and it's warmer under it's warm underfoot so is the berber carpet yeah but people don't like carpet upstairs i guess i should have pre-qualified that carpet in the basement's fine okay yeah. Thank you. So I'm going to talk about a little bit about home staging. And home staging is kind of what we do just before we put a house on the market. Now it's very popular. I'm sure you've heard of it before. And it is the art of designing a home to sell. So it's not decor. It's not decorating. It is really the transformative art of giving rooms purpose showing space in the room and appealing to as many buyers as you can to allow them to envision themselves to, in living your home and bringing you a big bag of money to do it. So it's not decorating. So there's no, when a stager comes in, I bring my stagers in to do a home consult. Um, so it's not a commentary on how you've loved your home, that's great. It's the art of transforming it to appeal to the most amount of buyers. And when we do a home staging, there's really specific focus. Now I take it a step further when I do it because I try and figure out who the buyer will be for any home that I have on the market. And I try and have my home staging envision that buyer and then create a home that that would focus on appealing to that specific buyer. So if it's a young family with kids, that's who I would focus on. So I would stage the bedrooms with children in mind or create a playroom. So that is, I kind of take a step back and think about who my target audience is and create a house that reflects that. But the overall focus is on depersonalizing, creating flow. So that's created with, um, making sure the furniture is arranged to show the size of the room and be able to walk from room to room easily, to enhance the natural light that's available in the house, to show off the storage that's available in the house or create storage and to show functional space. So everybody uh, through the pandemic has placed a greater emphasis on working from home so one of the things that I'm focusing on now is to show a functional space that can be a work from home space so that people can see how that's used for their family and envision themselves there. Because buyers sometimes have very, need to have it shown to them. They don't have a lot of imagination to um, understand a, a blank room and where furniture can fit. So we bring in decor and furniture to show these things off in your house. So now, Personal, personally, I like working with a homeowner's furniture because I find it's warm. I don't believe in taking all your furniture out of the house and bringing all new furniture in. I like working with my homeowner's furniture because I believe it creates a warmer environment 
to show off, but we work with what you've got. So it's kind of like taking your house and making it better. Mm. So you don't have to worry about walking into your house while it's staged and not feeling like you're in your own home. You just feel like you walk in your own home and go, hey, I'd buy this house. That's the reaction <laughs> I like to get. Hey, I'd buy this house. Why am I selling it? Look at how beautiful it is. Mm. So I'll give you a couple of examples of, of that. So this is a staged living room. This is a house I sold in Guildwood. And so we really just took their furniture, placed it for better flow, removed some of the pieces that were not matching, and then picked up a lot of the colors that were in this beautiful painting on the back and used that for the accessories that we brought in with the throw pillows and the, and the rug and the, uh, the, the throws and things like that to pick up those colors, just to create a very warm, inviting environment. Unfortunately, I don't have a before of this. I always forget to take the before pictures. Okay. Here's that basement that I showed you before that's had the paneling painted down one wall. The first picture is just my cell phone picture. The second one is the professional picture that we used when we listed it. And the homeowner had already taken out all the furniture from the basement and gotten rid of it. She was downsizing into an apartment. So what we did is we tried to create some spaces to show how you could use this. So we set up a play area for the kids. We set up a reading nook in the back and around this side we had, around the corner, we had a home office set up. So a buyer could come down here and go, oh, okay, here's how I can use this space in a few different ways. And we brought in a few accessories just to warm it up. So that's very simple, home staging. And everything here has been brought in to, to put the props up. And sometimes we make a games room, depends on uh, what the space calls for. Where do they put your own furniture, your, your, your own furniture when you have to take it out and put this other, bring the other furniture in? Oh, Where's good question. Um, so in some cases, if people are downsizing, they, they get rid of it, they're selling it or whatever they're doing with it. And then we just supplement uh, with rented furniture. But in some cases, we bring a mobile storage unit in, like a pod, and then extra stuff gets stored at a storage facility where while the house is for sale, and then we bring it back after. Okay. Um, with this last picture, uh, the homeowner had um, wanted to get rid of, she was downsizing, and she was excited about buying new furniture for her new place. So she was getting rid of all her living room furniture, which was uh, kind of more antique. And what we did is this is fully staged. We brought in all these uh, decor pieces and the furniture in with the stager to complement the wall color, which was like a nice pale sage green and those beautiful floors. And we picked up all the little hints with the accessories and everything, but we still kept it a fairly uh, relaxed and family friendly. So it doesn't look all shiny and, and like a new build. It looks like a family home that's still living here to make it warm and inviting. But these are all state, this is fully staged, this room. The drapes were the only thing that was original when we started. So you can still see it still looks warm and inviting. Actually, even the glasses and the books here are staged. <laughs> My stagers are very, very attentive to detail. <laughs> And then here's a final view, a different view of that um, basement room. As you can see, the same stagers set up a playroom area in this basement because again, there was really no functional furniture down here. So we just set up some play areas and we brought a desk and chair from upstairs to set up a little office area. You, there you can see here a little better how we've took that darker wood trim that was around the windows and painted that white. So there's a little bit of a contrast there. This, this little box is where the elect electrical panel is. Okay. And then this is another home that we staged. Now these homeowners were very nervous about having home stagers come in. They loved their house and uh, were moving because of health reasons. And it was a very emotional uh, thing for them to go through. So this is all their own furniture. They had uh, more furniture in here than the rooms kind of called for. It was a little overstuffed. So we repurposed some furniture, re, um, changed it around a little bit, and then picked up the colors in this beautiful rug and used it to create a nice inviting space with the pillows that 
that uh, worked up the rugs. They also had a lot of plants. They were very avid gardeners. So we kind of spread the plants around the house just to um, make it look inviting and uh, show off the big windows that they had in the house. They were very pleased with it. Actually, my home, the stagers for these clients came and set up the furniture in the house for them to look like this when they moved because they were so pleased with the way it looked like when it was staged. And they had a very private backyard. So you can see there's a drapery rod here. They had some heavy curtains on it, but there was nobody being able to see in their backyard. So we just took the curtains down to, uh, to show off the backyard because they had a, a swimming pool and everything. So we wanted people to see that view when they came through the house. So that's part of the staging we did as well. Mm -hmm. okay. And then lastly, this should kind of shows you what happens in a blank canvas room. So this was a new construction home that, that I sold a couple of years ago and it had no furniture in it. So we brought all this furniture in. It's actually a blow up bed on a stand with some nice bedding. And this shows you how we take it very literally. And this was a girl's bedroom. And you can see that there was pink, there was pink uh, artwork. We had another room that was staged as a boy's room or bring in a, um, make a nursery. So we try and be quite literal so that a buyer can say, oh, here's where the girl's room would be. Here's where the boy's room would be. Here's where the home office would be. And that's all part of the staging process. So I, I bring my stagers in kind of when we start to work on the house and we develop a plan and then they come in and the staging furniture comes in kind of like in a two hour period, they set everything up and they're gone. And they do it all um, with masks and gloves and everything on. And there's another view. So you can really see how it makes a difference with how somebody perceives the room when the furniture's in it. Okay. So that's kind of the end where, how are we doing for time? Oh, we're very close to the end. So that kind of gives you an overview of the different things that you can do to get your home market ready. Did anybody have any specific questions? Yeah, I guess I've got another one. It's about the basement again. Yep. <laughs> um, if there's a real, a, a lot of stuff that has to be rid of, would you be able to give us ideas of people that come and clear out stuff like that? Yes. It depends. You know, we, it depends what you think needs to be done. Do you need somebody to help you work through where the things need to go? Uh, yeah, mostly it's just, it would be a lot of it's computer stuff. So, um, it, and I think your, your, uh, lady gave us a couple of addresses for paid places yeah. that yeah. do that, but it would be really other people that you can hire who can haul a lot of stuff out because yeah. we just can't do it anymore. Yeah. So if you need just to get things out and you are taking it you know, having it go to the um, transfer station, if it's electronic goods that you're not going to be donating or selling, or if it's paint, or if it's junk that you're just getting rid of that you can't dispose yeah. of any other way. Yeah. I have people that will do that much cheaper than 1-800-GET-JUNK. 1-800-GET-JUNK is very expensive to do that. Okay. Yeah, that's the kind of thing I was saying. I mean, a lot of stuff, we know where to take it. You know, we know where, where yeah. it has to go, but there will be some heavy hauling. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, so I have people that do that sort of thing. They tend okay. to be in and they will do junk removal and they're way cheaper, way, way cheaper. Okay. 1-800-GET-JUNK. Excellent. Okay. okay. The okay. other thing, believe it or not, that you can do for large items uh, is you can put good used large items at the curb. Yeah. And yeah, they usually go the before the garbage guys come. <laughs> yeah, the junkers come out. Yes, yeah. Um, I prepared a house in Guildwood and they had a lot of very heavy things, decor items that, you know, we didn't want to put in landfill. No. Um, and it was incredible how quickly yeah. this stuff was gone. As a matter of fact, there is an Instagram account now that's called, um, that, that people post a picture in of things that are on the curb and people will see this on Instagram and come and pick it up if it's really? like drawers or anything. So there's a lot of um, sensitivity in a younger generation of reusing and recycling and they okay. appreciate that stuff. And, and so quite often that it can, it goes away by itself, but yes. Yeah. I do. Okay. No, that's good to know. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. What's the so, Instagram account 
named and called. It's on Instagram. Are you on Instagram? I don't know what that is. Okay. <laughs> so if you're on social media, they're the two biggest kind of platforms. Facebook is one. Instagram is another one. And Instagram is kind of all pictures. Oh, and so okay. it's called Stooping Toronto, like S-T-O-O-P, like you left something on a stoop. S-T-O-O-P, yeah. oh yeah. Yeah. So. I have Facebook, but I don't know about Instagram. Maybe I do, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but in, on Facebook, there's lots of buy and, local buy and sell groups. So uh, again, there, there's one for the West Rouge, there's ones for Scarborough, and you can, and there's, there's other groups where you can just put free stuff up. And those are, if you put something up on a local group, it's gone in like five minutes. It's very efficient. Hmm, okay. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, if you've got pictures of stuff and you're not members of those groups and don't care to be involved in social media, that's something I can post stuff. And But you'll have people coming to your home. So you have to think that through. People will be coming to your home to take it if you can't leave it out on the curb and you have to balance that with your need to get rid of things. Um, okay. So how do you decide where to start with this? Because there's a lot and you have to make some decisions and some of them are monetary. So in my business, I the homeowners generally take care of anything that is a permanent update to the house. So in uh, renovating or painting and things like that, I generally take care of any home staging that's required with my stagers um, and cover that in my real estate fees. So how do you decide how that works for you and where to put your money? Well, you kind of have to go step back and say, what's your home worth? And then what do I do to get the maximum out of it? And so there's a couple of ways you can figure that out. Um, wh what does your home worth now and what will these updates do? Well, you can hire a, an appraiser they're through the banks, they cost you a few hundred dollars and you can have an appraiser come in and look at it like a bank would and say, here's how much your house is worth now. You can have a realtor in like me or anybody else that you might know to take a look at the house and give you an idea of what the house value is in this market. And then the last one is what I call be a nosy neighbor. So you guys all have email accounts um, I have a website that's got this really cool feature that they just started and I can, you know, every, once a month, you'll get an email and everything that's sold in your area will come to your in basket so you can kind of see what the other houses have been selling for and that's what I call the be a nosy neighbor part. So you, you can keep updated on that and those emails can come out as often as you want. Uh, most people like to see it once a month, and I can draw a map so it's in your immediate neighborhood so it's a pretty cool feature so. You guys all have my email. You can always let me know if you'd like me to set you up on that sort of thing. What's, called like. again? What's it called again? The Be a Nosy Neighbor? Oh, yeah. Be a nosy. Yeah, the Be a Nosy Neighbor. So that's really just uh, when you go on to MLS and those services, really all you can see right now is what's for sale. And that's not necessarily what the prices of the houses sold for. So the nosy neighbor would be getting an email to see what they sold for in your okay. neighborhood. And you could get it once a month or twice a month, whatever you like. Mm -hmm. So let me know if you want that. Um, and then not many people hire an appraiser. I'll tell you because they generally have a realtor in or, or do something else. But you can always hire an appraiser. It, it would cost you three or $400. Mm -hmm. OK, so that's it. If you have any other questions, let me know. Mm -hmm. um, as I say, in March, I'm going to be doing an Ask an Expert series where we'll have um, over the, each Tuesday a different professional talking about their area of expertise. And you have I've asked them to do about a 20 minute presentation and then have 20 minutes of question and answers after. And uh, we'll have a home stager, a financial expert, a lawyer and a home inspector. Now, the lawyer one hopefully will be really good and maybe they'll ask be able to answer some questions, you know, for um, estate planning and things like that. So if you've got some questions in regard to that, write them down. And uh, when I put the invitation out, um, I'm hoping to have that the second week in March. That I think will be a really popular one. And here's how to get a hold of me if you have any other questions. 
and I don't know if anybody, did anybody put any questions in the chat today? No. Nope. Does anybody have any other questions? Um, Was that helpful? Very yes. helpful. Good. Yes, absolutely. All right, great. And then if you want um, contractors or area contractors or to know about these people or something, you can drop me a line because I have a list of a whole bunch of people that my clients have used that are reliable and um, well-priced. Um, and you can always get a couple of quotes. I can always provide you with a few names if you like. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Sue. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sue, it's Arlene. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, thanks, Arlene. Okay. And Susan Van Putten, I sent you an email last week. I know you had a question and I sent you an email. Um, you don't have your mic on, but I'm just hoping that you got my email and yes. that I'm able to answer your questions. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thanks, bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much, Sue. Okay. okay. Great. Great. 